YouTube, Luke the Window Cleaner. Rihanna? I wore makeup today. Because it's like 70... It's kind of chilly. No, it's 60 something. It's, yeah. It's awesome. It's been like... Heat index has been in the hundreds, and so it's been awesome. This is a really, really nice break. It's also going to rain. Today we're going to take you along for an interior window cleaning uh, at a storefront, give you some tips on how we work and our kind of workflow there. Um, but it honestly starts from the outside, I think that's a good place to start. So when we're cleaning storefronts, I'd say small to medium sized storefronts, we rarely take uh, the window cleaning bucket. So one dip will we'll get the whole thing done. That's where our squirt bottles come into play. The Mormon soap came out a couple months ago, and I think it's an awesome soap. I do. I think you can use, if you use too much of it, it leaves a lot of like a haze behind because it is like concentrated. So use less when you're using that soap. But these bottles are fantastic. If you've ever seen the Window Cleanses channel, you know Jordy is like king of like using a squirt bottle to wet down the window, to squirt up on the window, and I've never been good at that. And uh, now I have this bottle and I look like Jordy, I swear. You're always <laughs> squirting them on there? Yeah, I am. And guys, for some reason, if you don't want to purchase that, um, any kind of squirt bottle will work. I use a Dawn bottle. Um, it's not as good. It's, but that's what I was gonna say. It's not as good because uh, just the ease of that bottle, you don't have a, a cap on it. It's, uh, that's kind of cool. So you just pick it up and squirt it out. That's really so I cool. Could, I could store it upside down if I wanted. Like uh, pull some blades? Yeah. So we're gonna clean the outside of this and then we'll get to uh, the inside and kind of walk you through how we do the inside of restaurants. never have a dripping mop so we always screen out our mop and then we dump our hip buckets see all that excess water because the last thing you want is for your hip bucket to, to tip over while you're inside and then spill that all over the place and you don't want your mop dripping all over the place either as our mop starts to dry out on the inside if we need more water that's why we have our squirt bottles the squirt bottles save us time from going in and out to keep wetting the mop yeah. If you prefer a spray bottle, you could also carry a spray bottle. So when you work in restaurants, one of the first things, uh, non-slip shoes. You need non-slip shoes because, like this is a burger place, we work at chicken places, the floor gets really greasy and it's really slippery, and the managers will want you to have non-slip shoes. So whether that's boots, sneakers, whatever it is, wear oil-resistant shoes, or slip-resistant shoes. And then when we get started, um, each storefront is different, but we typically start on opposite ends. So Rihanna will get started over here. I'll get started over here. 
and then we'll meet in the middle. Uh, this prevents us from kind of cleaning over each other's work and everything else, so specifically how we work. So this job doesn't care if I stand in the booth, so I can get started over here while Luke's doing pole work on the other side. Now, if this was an open restaurant and this booth was empty but there were customers right here, I still would not stand in this booth just because I've noticed that if you do that, it makes whoever's sitting here uncomfortable. And that's not what we're trying to do. We're just trying to get in, clean it, really not even be seen or noticed. So if there was a family here, I would not stand in this booth, but because it is empty, I can easily walk along the booth and clean off the windows. Now, if there was, this one was empty, this one was empty, and there was a family there, I would stand in this booth I would not stand in that booth. Just, I try to keep my distance from them. If I have to, um, I would sit on my knees in the booth uh, before I would stand in it next to a family. And if there are customers in the booth, um, we always talk to the franchisee or the owner, or whoever set up, we set up the account with, and we let them know that we will skip those windows. Uh, we cannot wait for someone to finish their food, so we'll skip it. Uh, we'll clean the whole restaurant and then if they have gotten up obviously we'll clean it before we leave but we cannot wait for folks to finish and we've, we've never had a problem with that never and we've also gotten to the point to where uh, drive throughs if the drive through is like crazy crazy busy on the inside or the outside we'll skip it we'll skip it yeah it, it's just communication as long as you let them know that this, this is what you're going to do I think it's okay but if you kind of reassure them that you're gonna clean all the windows no matter what every time and then you start skipping them, that's when you're gonna have a problem. So if you just, you're honest with them from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And if they don't like that, then tell them to give you a key. Exactly. There's always fingerprints at the bottoms of these windows. So I use my steel wool. I try to catch as much water as possible. Oh, you gotta move. Here, which I clean up with my slop towel because you want to leave the restaurant like you came into it you don't want to leave slop water everywhere and of course you'll detail and then as I'm stepping out of the booth I will wipe away any footprints that I left, any water that I left on the seat. Because if you do that, then they're not gonna care as much that you're stepping in their booths. <laughs> also something that I think that we kind of overlooked with employees, um, when you walk up to a window, you should already know where you're gonna have to steal wool because I don't wanna steal wool this entire pane of glass. So when I walk up to a window, I should already be assessing where are the fingerprints. Like, here's some here. I don't know if you can really see them. There's some here, and that's it. So that's really the only spot I need to steal wool on the inside because you want to get in quickly and clean as quickly as possible. So I don't want to steal wool this whole window. So now I know I only have to steal wool this one spot down here, and then the window will be clean after I squeegee it. As we're working, we're always conscious of all of the drips inside. So these little drips here, make sure we're always wiping them all up. Uh, you don't want to leave any drips behind for someone to slip on or the manager wouldn't appreciate that either. Okay, so whether or not you're a fan of the two-handed technique or not, and you like straight poles, uh, hopefully when you're on the inside of the restaurant, I suggest catching your drips. I think it shows a sign of uh, like respect, especially when managers and employees are watching you, um, and it should prevent a little bit of extra cleanup. So on the inside of restaurants, you'll always see us using the two-handed technique, and that's so that we're catching our drips as we're cleaning.
And so it should just have minimal cleanup here on the inside. And I'll take my towel, wipe that up there. A fluke moving the tables away from the windows. We'll of course move them back when we're all finished. So some restaurants you'll see they have the signs, uh, these window cleans on the outside, some have them on the inside. Um, the most important thing when you're uh, cleaning these windows with the window cleans, you know, still on the so like for me, again, this is down here, this is the high traffic part of the window. So I'll just steel wool it. But when we're cleaning them, we have a lot of questions about this. So you'll see I just clean right over the sign and you'll see all this excess water around it. So make sure you're always detailing that because if not, you'll get this right here. See that drip? You have to detail pretty much the whole, the whole sign every time. You also have vinyl lettering or signs on the doors and windows. Again, we just squeegee right over them. And the important thing is, is you take oops, one of your detail towels and go over it. Because if you don't, this will drip and you'll have uh, a nasty looking window. Clean detail towel. Yes, clean is very important. So this is exactly what we were talking about. My mom's kind of drying my accelerator. So I will add some water to it. And you'll notice when we add water to our mops on the inside, we typically always put our mop up against the window and then put it on there. We do this to prevent drips, because if you're doing it this way, it can, I don't know, you could drip water on the floor or whatever, but putting it up against the window, you're ensuring less drips on the floor. <coughs> also, I think the accelerator or any pivoting tool is an awesome tool, especially for insides. Even if you like straight pulls, just give this a try for the inside. Um, it's because on the inside, I would think that you don't want to be switching tools out as much. So this one, you know, you have your mop and squeegee combo all right here. And if you don't like the accelerator or you can't figure it out, which is common uh, because of the liquidator channel, you can either mod your accelerator or you can just get the um, wagtail. Wagtail is a much easier pivoting pull tool to learn. And I, I personally learned on the wagtail, which made me, I think, better at using the accelerator. So if you're uncomfortable with the, the accelerator, try the, try the other first. Um, try the other because it'll kind of get you ready for this one. And I would also like to say that when you're cleaning windows, especially with the pole on the inside, be very, con be very conscious of your pole. The last thing you want to do is hit somebody or, Lord forbid, you hit like a kid or something like that. That's why I always try to hold the end of my pole. I don't like holding it up here or anything because you don't know where the back part is. So I always try to work with holding the end of my pole, especially on the inside of restaurants. Then when you're done with your pole, never set your pole down fully collapsed or fully extended. I always collapse my pole and then I'll set it somewhere out of the way. So I'll set it like in this corner is a good spot. Setting it somewhere like right here, this is a bad spot. This is a high traffic area. Someone's gonna knock it over or it can fall on someone. So, um, yeah. And also, when you're working inside of a restaurant, if this restaurant was open, you need to be really conscious of people coming in and out of doors. So, we always will jump to the side or hold the door open for customers coming in. Uh, we're not going to stay there and like say I just started mopping out this window and someone comes behind me. I'm not going to make them wait. They're customers of the store. I work here. So I would of course open the door for them. Steel wooling does take a little more time on the doors, but if you want the door to look perfect, which we do, 
That's why we steal wool, but it's really easy just to jump out of the way and jump right back into it. You can even hold the door open and clean it while it's open. It's not very hard. Okay, wait. So some of these doors, you'll see these handles on the inside. They're going to be too close to the window to get your squeegee in there. Um, this one, luckily enough, has about an inch of room so we can fit our white body in there. Uh, try using a slimmer channel, and if that doesn't work, you can just take your detail towel and squish it in between the door and this handle and run it along the side, and that takes care of any water so you're not having any drips from the bottom down here. All right. I think. All right. All righty. Luke says all right for two minutes straight, so I'm going to get video. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Just cut it out from all the other videos. So uh, if you have any questions about interior window cleaning, I mean, we just kind of touched base on, I think, some of what we consider to be important tips there. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And we have a forum now. We have our own forum. If you go to lookthewindowcleaner.com slash community, we have our own forum there. So really any questions you have, whether it be estimate help, um, what kind of tools to use, if you just want to get to know us, want us to get to know you. We're talking about the huge convention over there, mm -hmm. we're talking about favorite tools over there. So go to the forum, lukethewindowcleaner.com slash community. If you go to our website, it's lukethewindowcleaner.com, and you hit the drop down menu, it's under the pro page. So go to the pro page, sign up for the forum. It takes a minute. Yeah. And uh, guys, we're just trying to co consolidate how we talk to you and the cool thing about the forum is we just wanted to do something different everyone's got a Facebook group we wanted to do something a little bit different and the forum also allows us to archive all of our questions and answers so you can go through as this continues to grow and start searching some of these things and uh, it'll be real helpful and there are other guys on the forum that can help say we're not there immediately yep. uh, which we're trying to be we're trying to be as, as active on the forum as possible if, if we can't get there another guy can step in and help you out so if you're a veteran guy and you like helping out new guys or just helping out each other, come on over. If you're a new guy, yeah. come over, ask us questions, send us pictures, we'll help you with estimates or what we would charge. Um, yeah, so just come over to the forum, say hello, introduce yourself. There's a thread called Introduce Yourself and yeah, so yeah, it's exciting. We have our own forum. Come join us. Join our cult. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell icon to get notified when we upload new videos, which is every Wednesday. Also, follow me on Instagram. Follow Luke the Window Cleaner on Instagram. I just hit over 1,500 subscribers or followers. And I've got a giveaway cooking over there. I'm going to do a giveaway very, very soon. So if you're not following me on Instagram already, follow me on Instagram. There's an Instagram giveaway coming soon. Cool. All right. Bye. Bye.